to try and see what happens. Okay. Now let's talk about diction. Diction as opposed to articulation and enunciation. They really are three different things. Diction is singing a language or speaking a language uh, so that it sounds like you're a native speaker. And to do that, you really do have to have the proper accent, what we call the proper accent. But there is a technical way to approach diction that will help you purify your diction and make it sound much more like a native speaker. And the way to do that is by creating a form through which you sing. Now, the ideal form for singing is the A ah in the Italian word S-T-A-I, stai. So I'm going to try to create that stai by breathing. So I breathe. But then I have to sing, let's say, French. And I've got to find some formation through which I can sing and then make it sound like French. And French is full of certain sounds that are very dominant. The E uh is one of them. So if I say, je ne veux que chasser du fond de ma mémoire, right? How do I create this je in a way that it's singable? In that sty. So I go sty, and then I say je. And now I sing everything through that formation. You understand? I'm going to now on only talk through that shape of that formation. So that if I sing, I can sound like I sing the French, like I am from France. So I don't sing, Je ne veux que je suis for mémoire. Trying to make it sound like French because it brings the corners of my mouth forward. Je ne veux. The sound is getting all caught in my lips and in my inside of my cheeks. So I don't want to lose my resonance. So I got to go back to my sty formation to keep my resonance. So I go, sty, and then I say, je. Je ne veux que je suis de famille And I can keep my resonance. And I can also sound like I'm a Frenchman. So you breathe. La fleur que tu m'avais jetée Dans ma prison m'est restée I can say prison. I don't have to go prison. On. I can go prison and maintain that what... Caruso uh, called the rectangle in the back of the neck. He told Rosa Ponzel to always keep a rectangle in the back of her neck. That's that sty formation. Breathe. Ah. Now, if I want to sing German, a German is full of all kinds of strange sounds, like uh, Leben, the closed E, and then Tod, the closed O. Then you have Echtet, Echtet, a very open A eh sound. Uh, so you have to learn to sing all of these sounds. So what is a good formation for German? See? It's funny that people, when they imitate German, uh, they want to make fun, they want to tell jokes in Germany, they immediately get to that sound like that. But what is the basis of that sound, yeah? It's that ah, that very, what the Germans call flat ah. It's an ah that exists in German in words like lachen and, and, and wachen and sachen, right? You want to get so that you you can create that formation when you sing. So you make your sty, then you say lachen, and then you sing everything like that, right? Die Weisheit lehre dieser Knaben. So everything sounds like you really are a German when you sing. And when you speak dialogue, you go, Es fällt mir manchmal ziemlich schwer, an die Liebe zu der unglücklichen Mörderin zu glauben. I'm holding in my mind a wachen, lachen, Inside that sty form. The sty is my megaphone. And then I say, through my megaphone, I say, lachen, sachen, right? Wachen, ah. And then I say all of my words through that formation, and all of a sudden I sound like I just got off the boat from Germany. That's the idea. Now the Italians have that open ah, the one we use all the time as our basic megaphone. The sty, we go, so if I'm going to time to get off of the boat, it's like a like a that. And the whole voice is built on this ah. Uh, uh. So I got to go down to town and get some need to be back later. You want to go to town? No, I don't want to go to town. So all we have to do is breathe that. 
and then sing like that. So if I sing this way, la da la mobile, qual fium adventa, I can actually sound like an Italian speaker when I sing. Now this applies to any language that you're going to use. Uh, I did some accent coaching for a while, and you realize there's a lot of the uh, of of, uh, of of the physical movements inside the, the the nose and the throat and the mouth and the tongue, and you can actually create with the jaw. You can create a formation that makes you sound like you're, let's say, that you're, 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 you're an Oxford graduate. And the way I want to sound like I'm an Oxford graduate is by dropping my chin backwards and my jaw backwards and then stopping up my nose so that my nose is stopped up. And then if I had to sing like I went to Oxford, I would say, I would sing like that. When Laura smiles, as I revise both night and day. But if I went to Cambridge, then I'd put my teeth together and put my corners back and talk like that. And now you notice that my nose is open. And I'd say, when Laura smiles, her sight revives. In other words, it's, it's possible through these physical formations to create diction, that is, the sound of the language, so that people will believe that you are a native speaker. And uh, if you get good at it, you can fool a lot of people. And it shows up sometimes in your, in your reviews. And the, the critic will say, the best French on the stage last night was Mr. Trimble or whoever, right? And the reason is that you're, you're, you've, you've got that, that, that formation through which you're singing. It's like uh, a megaphone within a megaphone. I have my big megaphone, sty, and then within that I go, je ne veux que je see the phone in my mouth. Ah, ah, and I sing, ah, ah, and everything comes through that formation. And if, you'll, if you will experiment with this a little bit, I think you'll find that it is the key to good diction. Now, articulation is something different. Once I create this, once I've got my je ne veux, then I have to say, la, 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 na, 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 da, 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 ta, ta, ta. I have to enunciate the consonants. I have to be very, I have to articulate la, na, da within the formation. So if I'm an Oxfordian, and I'm talking like this with my nose closed, I still have to say, la, 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 la. You get the idea? So diction has to do with formation, and formation can be established as soon as it's clear to you what the basic formation of one of these languages is. I mean, you can hear it or get someone to demonstrate it for you. I can demonstrate it pretty much uh, in a number of languages, having done, uh, you know, I've worked with... Uh, movie actors and various people that had to have accents. Uh, let's say you've, you, you, you want to be a country singer. And you, so what formation do, does a country singer use? He say, hi ye. Well, you have to think where it goes back to. It goes back to Scottish. And they say, put the pot on the stove, how are you today? And you add some Irish lilt to that. And all of a sudden you say, how are you, how's your father? And you get these mix, and all of a sudden you got a position of the voice like that. Then you say, how many times have I heard someone say? And you got that formation. You can sing with it all you want. So sometimes you work with country singers. Sometimes you work with folk singers, right? And you can make them all pretty much, especially artistic people who are going to sing four, maybe five languages in one recital, one concert, in one evening. And every one of those uh, groups of songs is supposed to sound like it's sung by a native speaker. So it is a tremendous help to know about diction and diction techniques and articulation and articulation techniques. And I think that if you'll practice these ideas, you will find you'll get not only compliments for how genuine you sound when you sing those languages, but that your diction in the auditorium will be, will be crisp and clear and people will understand every word you sing.